creative continuity. We bring the convention to you. E2E2 with Chad L. Coleman. Yes. Thanks for the interview, brother. You had a run on The Wire. How was The Wire experience for you? Uh, the Wire was an amazing experience. The Wire basically changed my life. It mm -hmm. put me on a national scale. And, um, and also to be a part of something that was so renowned uh, validates me within the industry. And uh, so I'm getting work from it. That's how I got The Walking Dead. Did you read the comic prior to the show? Yes, I did. I didn't read the entire comic. I read my storyline to make sure I understood where I was, where my character was coming from. But it was it's so different. And, uh, you know, I had The Godfather with me, Robert Kirkman. And, uh, right. you know, I was told to just trust what we're doing. And, you know, do your homework, make sure you know what the backstory is, but also right out of the box, it was already different. In the graphic novel, it's my daughter, but right. on the show, it's my sister. Mm -hmm. uh, my death uh, in the graphic novel happened with the governor chopping my head off. They gave that death to Herschel. Right. So it, it, the show was designed to stand on its own. And also we, had to develop something really different than the television, sh I mean, than the graphic novel because Daryl was not a part of the graphic novel, but on the show, he's basically Rick's right-hand man. Right, right, So right, that, right. he took that slot. So once he took that slot, we had to do something different with Tyrese, which I'm glad they did because it, it's it's a much, much more multi-layered character for me. How was it playing Tyrese? It was awesome, man. It was one of the most gratifying experiences, uh, television experiences I've ever had. Uh, this character has so much heart and humanity mm -hmm. and his care and concern for the community in spite of the circumstances just, just made him a fan favorite and made him just incredible for me to play. Yeah, let's talk about that as well. I wasn't expecting Tyrese to go. And yeah. how did you feel? Because your his death sequence was was beautiful. He yeah. went out like a champ. That's true. Well, you said it. <laughs> you said it best. <laughs> um, it was a great opportunity to work with David Morrissey again, and work with Lawrence Gilliard and and all the girls and uh, Chris Coy as well. So um, I think it was just a beautiful homage to the man, the uh, Scott Gimple, the mad genius, our showrunner just showed how much respect and love he had for the character and what he put on the page. And so I thought we just accomplished a couple of different things, man. We were able to push the envelope storytelling-wise mm -hmm. and style, and we were also able to really give full credence to how important this character was to well, the show. Was, right? Greg wanted to, the audience to experience profound loss. Mm -hmm. So in order for that to, him to matter, I had to do my job. Treadwater is a graphic novel, a video game, an interactive web series, a motion comic, and we're developing the TV show. Wow. So that's what's called. That's why it's called transmedia. Any way you want it, that's the way you get it. In the game, I portray a character by the name of Mr. O.C. and he's a bad boy. Uh, he's a <laughs> he's a he's an arms dealer. He sells. Intel secrets to the highest bidder. He rides around on the 747 jet. He's a businessman. Oh, okay. Makes a lot of money. Uh, real smooth operator, but you don't want to cross him. Right, right, right. Now, um, it's a very elaborate storyline, and once you see how he's intertwined, you know, say season two, season three, or other episodes of the uh, graphic novel, it's. <laughs> I don't want to give anything away. Uh, I he's see, amazing. I see, I see. He's an it's amazing dude. Tongue, though. Yeah, but uh, it, it's an amazing. It's a. It's a lot of aha moments going on, and that the audience will appreciate. Well, what else can we hope to see you in? And well, besides Treadwater. Well, you will see me in The Expanse. Uh, that's a new uh, sci-fi show uh, coming out in December with Thomas Jane and some other international stars that you will. Uh, appreciate. It's uh, based on the graphic novel Leviathan Wakes. These are num it's actually five number one best-selling novels, so that's going to bring a whole audience there. And then Thomas Jane and myself and some of the other cast members are from like the Hunger Games and Sin City, and, you know, we'll, we'll bring an audience. So I think we got something coming that that's needed. Uh, it's a spaceship drama. Fred Lucius Johnson is an amazing character, man. I mean, I think I had more dialogue in one episode than I did a whole season of The Walking Dead. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, this dude is amazing. He's a, he's a commander, and um, he's like a Colin Powell type. 
black well, commander. He's, he's a bad boy, there man. There we go. He's amazing. So, uh, but he gets he gets duped by the government, and then he has to figure some things out. And so the government calls him a hero, and the people call him a butcher. Mm. And so he's got to right some wrongs, but it's going to be amazing to see how he does it. Creator Continuity, signing off with Chad L. Coleman. Thank you. All right. Harold Gann, Creative Continuity at the Great Philadelphia Comic Con with Seth Gilliam. How long you been uh, in the active business? You've been in a number of things. I have, you know, I was just figuring this out with a couple of fans earlier. This is, uh, I've been in the business for 25 years. Wow, wow. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, it, it, it kind of hurts to say it out loud like that. 25 years. No, no, years. no, you look good, brother. It's you a long good. time. Thank you, baby. Thank you. I love playing Dr. Deaton on Teen Wolf. Oh, okay. You know, I mean, he knows, he knows what's going on, but he doesn't give it away. Right, right. He's like a great teacher in the sense of like, I know what the answer is, but it's more important that you come to the answer for right, yourself. Right, I right, can right. tell you what it is, but then you won't know it. You'll right. know, you only know it by getting there yourself. And I love that he's got this kind of patience and this kind of Yoda-like, this kind of zen right, quality right, thing yeah. going on. Yeah. And you do a good demeanor. Like, it's cool. He has this gentle vibe about him. Yes. But he's also not one to mess around with. No, you don't want to mess with the doctor, Not man. at all. The doctor will beat that ass. And Father Gabriel is a whole lot different from the Teen Wolf character. Father Gabriel is definitely different from Dr. Deaton, yeah. I think, I think they're kind of polar opposites, in a sense. Absolutely. You know, Father Gabriel doesn't know what is going on and is very ill-equipped to handle what's going on. And Dr. Deaton knows everything that's going on and is fully equipped to handle any right, and every right, situation. Right, yeah. well, I think you know we also have to remember that Father Gabriel was alone for like 18 months. Mm. You know what I mean? So when we meet the other people in the show, we get to see their, their change over right, from where right, they started right. to where they begin. We're meeting Father Gabriel, and this is like, of course, we're four or five seasons into the show. But for him, it's all very new. Right. Him stepping out into the world, he hasn't stepped That's out into true. this world yeah, he's yet. Stayed in the so this is all like for the first time. He's seeing this stuff for the first time. You know what I mean? Now, how's, so, how's your experience been just uh, working on the, the it's been, set? It's been a great experience. It's, it's been, been a great, great experience. The people are lovely. Everybody is, is so focused on the show. They're up for anything and everything that goes down. It's all about telling the story, not their individual story. It's about telling the story as a collective. Right. It's very much like The Wire in that sense, right, you know, right. where everybody had a sense that they were all part of a much larger thing. And it wasn't a vanity project, you know. And even though the show is very popular, you don't get ego when you're when you go to work, which is fantastic. That's awesome. Have you ever been scared on set? I've been a little freaked out. I wouldn't say scared, but I've been freaked out by the detail that they put into these right, right, to these right. creatures. I try not to look at them as much as possible because I like you know, I don't like peeking behind the curtain. You know right. what I mean? I want to see it like when it's a fl finished, completed project, and so. I kind of shy away from seeing them until it's right about time to start filming, and then the re the reactions are a little clearer and they're right, a little true. Right, right, right. Oh, you know? so when you seeing something coming at you, uh, I'm seeing something coming right, at you. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Have you read the comic book prior to the show, or are you coming into this for us? Um, no, I've read the issue where Father Gabriel is introduced, mm -hmm. which is I think it's issue 61. Um, and I read the Fear the Hunters, kind of a little trilogy, you know, three comics in month type of thing. But um, no, I, I take the, 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 the graphic novels as one thing and the TV show as something else. Right. You know, and I'm basically just taking whatever is on the page from the script that I get and trying to fill that out as best as I can and not take any information and, and read anything from the graphic novels that I might get stuck with. I don't want to like start oh, well, this is a great moment, maybe I could talk to somebody and to get, you know, right, we right, could do right. that on no, the show. That's smart. Or that's something smart. like that. And I want to be distracted and I didn't want to have too much information because there's plenty of information in the scripts that we get for the TV show. All right, this is Harold Gant signing off with Seth Gilliam. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure is all mine. Thank you for the interview. Not Not at beat all. that ass. Can I say that? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. It's a family show. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Ready? Ice cream. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> he had a fan. He had a fan. He had a fan. Okay. Like, hey, we're, we're here. We're hey, here. sweetheart. All right, we're here at Creative, creative Continuity. We're here at C2E2.